Started from the bottom, now my whole club in here. Uh, started from the bottom, now we're here. Well, who's oh. preaching tonight? Keith Pitt! Keith Pittman preaching the word tonight at sub 30. If you don't know, Keith Pittman is next gen pastor here at Celebration Church. Yes. Overseeing all of our students. Not only that, he's got a size 10 shoe. Size 10 shoe. Does a phenomenal job. Maybe back in the 90s, you heard of him. Little, little R&B group, Casey and JoJo. Jojo. That was, oh. that was Keith right hey, there. Oh my life. I pray for someone like you. He's probably one of the dopest preachers that you will ever see. Why? Because he's smart in the B-I-B-L-E. Hey, Sylvia, what do you know about Keith Pittman? Listen, Keith Pittman wears small shirts. And I thank God that I finally found you. Y'all ready? Stop 30. Here we go. Here we go. Uh, I got it going on to the to the break of dawn. What? I got the mad rhymes. You know it's mad times. I rock that flow like Junior Wishes with his sad oh. rhymes. Yo, that was mad cold and maybe even dirty. I'm uh. not your grandma's preacher. Welcome all to Sub 30. Oh. Oh. Come on, Sub 30. Yeah. 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 For our boy, Keith. Keith. Absolutely ridiculous. <laughs> I'm gonna let you finish, but hey, this last weekend, Beyonce had one of the best videos of all. I'm just kidding. Um, this last weekend was Patrick Keith's birthday, y'all. It was his birthday. And so, and so, should we sing? I don't know if we should sing. We don't have to sing. But we have you a gift. Where's our gift at? So we want to present you, Pastor Keith, with a little birthday love. And so, um, here we go. Here we go. Now, how old are you? You don't want to say? I'm the same age as Jesus. So, you want to open it right now? Open it right now. I'm excited. I'm excited for you to see this. This, this, is, this is not weird at all. Charles Young, Pastor Charles was there. He helped me pick it out. First, first of all, I don't wear small shirts. I, I want to make sure that we got that established right You wear small, small shirts. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, son, you know you like them. You know you like them red Jordans. You know you like them red Jordans. I'm going to keep these right here, the whole message. I'm you know you like them right red. Here. Put them right there. So anyway, so hey, put your hands together for Keith one more time. It's his birthday. Man, you know what? I'm going to put these on right now. Put them on. Put these on right now. I can't, I can't not put them on. So y'all give me a second as I, as I put these on. Like, I, it's very rare that I'm actually surprised by anything. And so, um, so I, 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 com I commend you guys for pulling that off. And the funny thing, I was like, look, man, you know, my birthday passed and ain't nobody said nothing about it. So I'm, it was going to get real weird in the office come tomorrow if I didn't hear anything from him. So, um, so just for the sake of everything, ignore the email that I said you were all fired. Um, didn't mean it, it was just a joke. Look at this. Y'all see these? Look at that. And they even match my socks. That's when you know that you're surrounded by some people that's in prayer. I'm telling you, man, they, they, they know what it is. Sub 30, what is going on? You guys good? You guys good? All right, all right, all right. It is such a, an honor and a privilege to be here. Like, I don't even know how you transition into your message after, after that. You got, you got Clay and Charles up here rapping. People lying on me saying I got on small shirts. This shirt is an extra large. I don't, you know, I don't even know what they're talking about, but nonetheless, I'm going to try to make this spiritual. So we're going to study the entirety of the book of Deuteronomy. You guys ready? I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. We're not going to do that. Um, but, like, but like Pastor Clay did say, my, my birthday did just pass on, on Friday. And, and I want to walk you guys through my, my Friday experience. Um, I woke up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And I would love to tell you that I was, I was beaconed by the presence of God to get up and to get alone in prayer and to really seek the face of the Lord. But the reality is that the new iPhone came out. And so, and so I got up early because I wanted to go and, and, and get it. So I, I go out to the spot to, to get the phone. I'm waiting in line. And you know how that whole deal is. We're all hit, sitting out there talking. And so the inevitable ends up coming up as I'm sitting there and talking with these individuals. And they say, so, so what do you do? 
So, you know, that's always the, the awkward question, especially when you're in ministry, because a lot of times you can go into a couple of different weird directions. You can get someone to say that they're atheists. You can get someone that says they, they hate Jesus. You can get someone to ask you a million questions. And I'm just here to get my iPhone, honestly. I don't really want to get into any theological debates. So I'm like, hey, you know, I work at my church. That's always the first filter um, of, of trying to keep things really simple. I said, hey, you know, I, I work at my church. And they're like, oh, that's great. Like, you know, what do you do? I'm a pastor. They're like, you're what? I'm a pastor at my church, and they're like, you don't look like no pastor I've ever seen. <laughs> Once again, I don't know whether I should be offended or if I should take it as a compliment that, you know what, I'm not walking around with a collar on. And so I'm like, I'm like no, you know, I'm, I'm a pastor. And, and so then they begin to talk and ask me some questions, which is fine at this point. My daughter actually reminded me, she called me um, while I was sitting in line and telling me happy birthday. And she said, hey, dad, you know, just think of it as a great ministry opportunity. So I, I, I want to thank her for encouraging me to, to say that. So I said, okay, you know what, I'm here with these people. Let me go ahead and go in and, and begin to, to spread the word of the Lord. And so as we were, they were talking to me and asking me some questions, it, it came up and it said, so what, what brand of Christian are you? what brand of Christian are you? And I'm like, well, what do you mean? And he's like, well, my, my, my aunt is a Christian. And, and she said that, you know, you can't have iPhones, that we need, to, we need to go against technology. It's actually the mark of the beast. And I was like, wow. And then another guy said, yeah, yeah, my, my, my uncle told me that he's, he's a Christian. And he says that he doesn't actually enjoy sports because that's a form of idolatry. And so these, each of these individuals began to tell me what it meant to be a Christian. They began to talk to me a little bit about what their version of Christianity was and, and what they had heard in their lives. And the unique thing is, as I sat there listening to all of this, what I realized is that they had heard a bunch of traditions and a bunch of man-made religion, and religion became the faith, and Christ got completely excluded from the process. You know, if, if we think about it, I could ask any of you, what does it mean to be a Christian? And, and, and nine times out of 10, we're gonna have a different response. And, and that's okay, quite honestly, it really is okay. But when you're talking to someone who doesn't know God at all, and they're just asking, how do I find Jesus? And they're getting all these different versions of it. What does that leave the lost person to believe? What does that leave the lost person to say, like, this is the faith that I feel that God is calling me to? And, and so as we begin the process, what does it mean to be a Christian? I, I thank God that, that in his infinite wisdom that he, that he laid it all out for us. While there may be different denominations and there may be different expressions of faith, that there still are some things that should be weaved into the mind and in the heart of every Christian that should be consistent no matter what your belief system is, no matter what your traditions are, no matter what church you go to. I mean, if you think about when Jesus was walking the face of the planet and doing his Jesus thing, it wasn't so much any issues with what he was doing, it was like the way that he was doing it. You remember when the Pharisees were debating with Jesus, it wasn't about the fact that you healed somebody, but you healed them on the Sabbath. And, and a lot of times you may have encountered some of those people and, and those folks were, were titled as the Pharisees, but you may have encountered some of those folks. They, they may come into an environment just like this and say, why are the lights low? Why, we, we, don't, we don't do that at my church. And now the expression of your faith becomes your faith. Think about it. You have people that, that show up just to comment. I told you I was going to say it, Clay, it's mine. You can't take it. So you have some people who just show up just to comment. They, they, they look at the way that we do ministry and, and then they critique it because it doesn't look the way that it looked when they were being raised. And now we have a crisis of identity, but I love the fact that, that Jesus had said, you know what, there's gonna be different expressions of faith, I'm okay with that. But there's some nuances that should be consistent. And, and so in, in Mark the eighth chapter, in verse 34, we're gonna, we're gonna pick up there in a second. So if you wanna turn there, that's cool, but I wanna put it into context for you really quick. At this moment, you have Jesus, and he's just had the big reveal. The big reveal is when he's talking with his disciples, and he says to them the, the poignant question, who do men say that I am? We're familiar with that text, who do men say that I am? And you know what the reality is? People are still asking that question to this very day. Who is Jesus? So the, the disciples respond, and some say you're the, uh, an, an apostle. Some say that, that, that you are John the Baptist. Some say that you are a prophet. Jesus said, okay, that's cool. And, and he says, but who do you say that I am? At this point, Peter speaks up and says that you're the son of the living God, you're the Messiah, that you are God incarnate. I feel like tonight that God is going to answer that question because I feel that some people are asking that question right now. They're saying, who is Jesus? And you may have come into this environment with your own thoughts on who Jesus is. I, I, I wanna let you know that I feel 
the anointing on me right now, and I feel that someone is going to get a clear understanding of who Jesus is first and foremost. But then secondly, they're going to understand what it truly means to be a follower of Christ. So when we get into verse 34, we find that Jesus begins to explain some things to his disciples. At this point, he's had the great reveal, and now he begins to talk to the disciples. But I want you to look at the way that the language is written. It should show up on the screens. But in Mark the eighth chapter in verse 34, it says that summoning the crowd along with his disciples. I want to stop right there and let you know that, that Jesus is summoning everyone. This is not something that's exclusive for certain groups of people, but he summons everyone. He summons them and he says to them, if anyone wants to be my follower, he must deny himself. Somebody say deny. deny. He says, take up his cross. Somebody say, take up the cross. Take up the cross. And follow me. Somebody say, follow me. follow me. Verse 35, for whoever wants to save his life will lose it, but whoever loses his life because of me and the gospel will certainly save it. Whoever wants to, to, lose, who wants to save his life, he'll lose it. But whoever wants to save his life, it, it will be saved if, if it's only in Christ. Today, I feel like God wants to address the question and say to you guys, like, I want to say, tell you exactly what it means to be a follower of Christ. And that's what we're going to talk about for the next few moments. And I've entitled this message, Can I Bring My Cross? Can I Bring My Cross? Uh, let's pray. Heavenly Father God, I thank you so much for your people, Lord. I thank you so much for this opportunity to, to speak into the minds and the hearts of your people, God. Father, I'm, I'm praying over the next few moments that you give us open eyes that we may see you. I pray that you give us open ears that we may hear you and, give us, and just give us open minds that we may understand you, Father. Have your way and do what only you can do. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Can I bring my cross? Now, before I go forward in this, in this message, I need a little bit of crowd participation. You guys with me? Yeah. All right, this, this, this is what I want to do. Now, I'm, I'm, I'm from up north, and I'm a little bit older. I just had a birthday, but it's just another year of wisdom and, and, and handsomeness, but I don't want to talk about that. It gets weird. But what I want to do is, you know, when I was coming up, there was this old school rap group that was called A Tribe Called Quest. Anybody know about A Tribe Called Quest? All right, that's cool. If you don't, it's all right, but y'all gonna, y'all gonna ride with me on this real quick. During the course of this message, there's gonna be a lot of ways that, that we, can, we can break some things down, but I wanna get your permission. And the way that we're gonna have this exchange of permission is I'm gonna quote one of the Tribe Called Quest lines and y'all are gonna fill it in if y'all want me to expound on it. And so what I'm gonna say to y'all is, can I kick it? Yes, yes. yes, see, somebody knows what I'm talking about in here. Praise the Lord. So when I say, can I kick it, if y'all want me to go in a little bit further on that, y'all need to respond and say, yes, you can. We're going to try that real quick. We got to do it all together. Look, I know that we're all are different cultures, but we got to be on the same beat. Okay? So I'm going to try this real quick. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. All right. That's what I'm talking about. See, so I'm, I'm, going, to, I'm going to test y'all with that. We're going to do it again just to make sure we're all in unison. Don't go to sleep. If you do, I would jump off this stage and stand on your chair. All right. Can I kick it? Yes, you can. All right, then I'm going. All right, so check it out. So, so Jesus is talking with the people and the disciples, and he begins to explain to them, what does it mean to truly be my follower? The first thing he says that you got to deny yourself. Let me, let me break that down for you. You know, in, in many cultures, people remove their shoes as a sign of respect. They remove their shoes as a sign of respect. They don't want to track their dirt into your house. So what they do is they, they typically take their shoes off before they go into your house. When I moved into my home, I remember when we first moved in, the carpet was brand new. You could still see the vacuum lines in it. It was perfect. And so we had a rule, like, nobody come into the house until you take off your shoes. Reason being is because I didn't want them to bring their dirt and track it all over my rug. So when you think about what our feet represent, the feet represent our transport of places that we've been. And the dirt on the bottom of our feet is really just a symbol of the, the residue of our past that has clung to us as a reminder of where we've been. It's, it serves as a reminder of our past, and if we're not careful, it's possible for us to allow the dirt of our past to be brought into our present and leave stains on the carpet of our future. Yeah. 